time. A couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40-foot Colvick Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the Taily. Bloody doing it! <laughs> We have owned Tayley for 104 days at this point, and only seen 50% of her. Well, if you can count Zach having a peek under the water, that could be bumped up to 75%. But still, it was time to see the rest, and that meant getting hauled out for the first time. This is by far the second most exciting day since buying Tayley. <laughs> I've just been like a little kid at Christmas. Like everything's so cool, the crane's so cool. I was being out of the water, I was being high up, I was about to start work. Some people would be like, oh, this time of year has come again. But no, it's very exciting. Didn't expect to, I don't know. We're obviously so high up the water. <laughs> we look over and we're like, whoa. Just as well, we aren't scared of heights, eh? It's literally the hottest day of the year so far as well. We're already sweating and it's like 9 a.m. So I'm gonna lather up in sun cream get in the shade, drink lots of water, and crack on with work. It's work time. First job on the list was finishing cleaning and going around and checking for electrolysis, corrosion, dings, soft spots, and surprises. We did a lot of this when it was fresh out of the water, but it was good to monitor how quickly areas of the boat dried, as areas that dried slower would tend to have osmosis. How's it looking? Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking really good. This is gel coat. Yeah. So that's gone through quite... So we need to remember to put double coats around here. No nasty surprises anyway. Happy? Yeah, really happy. These have been attacked, you yeah, can see. Bit, yeah. If you were thinking, hey, those bolts shouldn't have been attacked if all your anodes were sacrificing themselves correctly, you were definitely correct. Keep watching until later in the vid when we discover just why this has happened. Boat's out the water. We have gone round it and looked at every single bit. There's absolutely zero osmosis, which is amazing. Apparently Colvicks aren't really known for it anyway. But our friend Martin is here and he's just had a look round it with us. Zach's at the moment gone to meet this guy called Peter who apparently knows a lot of stuff and has a lot of tools so Martin's introducing Zach to Peter now. I'm about to just write down everything that Martin said. Um, I've already got a list for haul out, it's very very long but I'm gonna just write down what he said because the little dings he told us exactly how to do it and also about like the anodes and a few other things so I'm gonna write all that down before I forget. <laughs> oh! <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> oh, Lovely. That's been eaten alive. Three anodes. Oh no, it's four anodes. Crown them. Ah, oh, perfect. Oh, there's 45 and 46. Nice. Perfect. Zach, are anodes more or less expensive than you thought they'd be? Well, I, 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 they're not too far off what I thought they'd be. I think Becca had other ideas <laughs> about the price of... Um, metal. Metal. I just thought it's like a little bit of... I don't know, they're really heavy to be fair. But I didn't expect them to be as expensive. One of the anodes we got um, was about 50 quid just for a bit of metal. I know metal's expensive and I know it needed, but I'm surprised. I'm just surprised. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the price of an anode for all you wondering out there. <laughs> I need something to wipe them with. 
What, what your eyes? My goggles, look at them. Have I got a kitchen towel? Yeah, that'll be brilliant. That's alright. You can just take them off and get inside them. That's alright. You have that? Oh, yeah. Are they underneath you? The gloves are about five sizes too big for me. You literally look feral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your Google line. Get over your back. <laughs> oh gosh. How did we first? You can hear something. So go, oh, really quick. You're crackling. It, it sounds like it's something's drying out and it's like pulling air into it. Yeah. There's something. There's but it looks like filler. It doesn't look like epoxy. Yeah, that's not good, is it? What the heck? I don't know what that is. Well, we need to get it out and we need to do a good job on it. I don't know what it was. But we need but to... is, is, that is where it's coming from, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But it was, it was painted over twice with blue and... Well, we need to epoxy that instead, don't we, really? Yeah. There's something solid. Didn't go deep. No? No. That's me showing. Boat is clean, sanded, tape is on, and primers on all the spots that are showing the gel coat. We did just find a unexpected little pack, but we're letting that dry out. Zach is... <laughs> Looks like he's been... The chimney turn around <laughs> so i think it's time for a shower and an early night what's the time it's like 7 30. yeah we've been going for like 12 hours really so yeah ready to have some food and get clean <laughs> It is now day two of the haul out and we've been chatting quite a lot about, look at this position, I love it. We've been chatting quite a lot about what we want to achieve today. We've got a few different weather forecasts saying different things. One says rain at one and most of them say rain at like five or six. So hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, one minute. We've got the whole day to work on her. So yesterday, just before we're about to leave, we found a little soft spot so we're going to go around with the hammer and just tap the whole boat to make sure there's no soft spots the little soft spot what's it doing still it's still like like Crackling. sounds like a ticking noise it's like a tick, 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 tick. it's weird we know what it was filled with now yeah it was filled with car filler so apparently we spoke to well, a friend yeah we, we it was like a soft putty, putty wasn't it and apparently in the 90s they used to do that on boats if they had holes in them they used to just fill them with car filler which yes. I guess it worked from the 90s to now. Yes, yeah, so fa we're fairly sure that's what it was, but it was just, it was soft and yeah. weird. Could have been like, like 25, 30 years old. But you'd be very easy to go over it, even if you were hitting it with a hammer, unless like, because I poked it with a bit of a screwdriver and I was like, why is that like soft? soft? Yeah. Because it wasn't, it wasn't like spongy with water, but, but it was because it was holding it against it. Yeah, and we wouldn't have known unless we'd gone round and tapped. Actually, no, we wouldn't have known unless we'd heard the sound. Yeah, no, for sure. We heard the little like, ticking sound and we were like, where's it coming from? So we had our eyes shut and we were going around with our ear and we located it and then we started tapping and it was soft. When we came back, obviously when I dremeled this all out, it was all kind of covered in dust and you couldn't really see anything. So I've just got a wire brush just to kind of take out the dust that was in there. And I thought there would be, but there's some little holes in there. You could kind of see them poking through the dust, but I couldn't see them clearly. But 
there's several holes and it looks like That's there is a little bit of water coming out of it. See it? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. There's a tiny bit coming out of that one right now. So what we need to do is take it back to before that hole basically. Yeah. I'm just seeing where this little air bubble ticky stuff is coming from. So I know it's just below the seacock for the kitchen sink, which is that one in there. It's this. Oh. That's the putty stuff. Oh, weird. You don't think that's our depth thing at the moment? No, because it has to be open to the water, doesn't it? Yeah, but it? we don't have a depth. Where is the depth thing? That must be it. 100%. That must be it. Why well, have you never noticed that ticking sound before? Because we're out of the water. Or well, maybe it was from that, where it was there. Are the instruments off? That's the ticking. There's no air bubbles. Oh, really? It stopped ticking now? Yeah. Oh, well, we probably need, didn't need to unfill that then, did we? That's fine, we learn something every day. Yeah, we do. Okay, cool, well, we've learned that now, yeah? Hmm. And now we've got to figure out how to fill the hole in our boat. The echo sounder, can you look for the instruction manual? I don't think we've got one. No, you've not seen one? No. Okay, well, the good news is we don't have a random hole full of water in our boat. Actually, there's no bad news, to be fair. We just figured out that the thing we were poking and prodding last night uh, wasn't actually car filler. Well, it could have been car filler still, I guess. Um, but it was actually our depth sounder, which makes perfect sense, hence the ticking sound. But it's something that you would just never think of unless you dug it out and found it out, if that makes sense. I don't know, maybe watching this video, you'll be like, oh, that was so obvious. But when you're going along on these projects, if you hit your boat and there's a soft spot and you're like, oh no, it sometimes takes owning a boat and knowing that that's there to think of the bigger picture. But now we know, and I don't regret digging it out by any means, so now we're just looking into how best to fill it and whether epoxy will be too thick a substance to fill it with, basically. We don't want to do anything that will stop the sound and stop the accurate depth gauge. We live and we learn, eh? The good news is, I found <laughs> an anode. I'm really out of breath because I had to pull up a piece of floor and it just really didn't want to come out. It didn't have any screws in it, it had screwed holes but no screws. Um, but the trim had been, this trim here, well this one actually, had been built over it, which is so stupid. So I had to like crawl in, slide it up and then pry it out and I used a fork. But luckily I found the anode, finally. So here is the anode. So I'll show you where that wire goes actually. Let me grab this, put all the fenders in there. That black wire is here. So this is the end of the anode. So essentially, if I trim that back, we want that going to the engine. If I put that back to the engine, that should create a circuit between the anode and the engine rather than the prop and the C. Does that make sense? It's kind of a complicated thing and I'm like 95% understanding it, but it's just an odd concept. If you've A, never done electrics, and B, don't know much about the sea and currents and how ch things are charged and how they will attack other things if they don't get their little, like, metal to feast on. Um, and this explains so much. I don't know if we got it on film yesterday, but when Martin, who's like a, a great electrical engineer, <laughs> when he was on board and looking at the anodes, what he could see was the anode, uh, the big anode, the Macduff anode, um, that had been attacked, but just from being in the sea, let's say. It hadn't done its job. It, it slightly done its job, but not really. It was just kind of there and taking praise for something it hadn't actually done. The prop one had also done its job, but not how it was intended. <laughs> so it just stopped things from attacking the prop, which was great. It wasn't actually connected to anything. Um, so we're kind of lucky at this point that the prop didn't get attacked. The previous guy didn't use the boat too much so I think that's why the prop didn't take a beating but the 
Bolts did take a beating. Not too bad actually, which is great, but they would have taken more of a beating had we not discovered this now. So the anodes were great, that's why they haven't been attacked too much, but they could have been better. <laughs> they could be attached to something, which is their true purpose. Um, but there we go, we've found it now, and luckily um, we're just preventing issues in the future, not fixing issues that have been created because of this, luckily. We caught it just in time. Need to fix that, and then we're, then we're good. The thing is, people might have thought it was the anode was doing its job so someone might have swapped it out every year and been like yeah this anode is eroding it's doing its job yeah but it's only until you really know the true purpose of an anode and know what it really can do what it's capable of if that makes sense when it's connected properly that you know that that wire down there should go back to something yeah. so it could have been like that always really yeah it's, it's good to know that it's actually going to be connected now. Yeah, that was a horrible floorboard to pick up though. Yeah, I, guess, we... I guess you don't really usually need to get to that. I'm going to keep a log of all the things we find as well. This is still leaking water. And so it's down here. Let's suit up. We're not going to get as dirty as we did yesterday. <laughs> I think it might be raining. You think it's just dripping down and along? I don't know. I'm going to have to dumb all that back there a little bit, I think. Yeah. Because I can push water out of that. It's coming out way more now. We've opened it up, which is good. A really good thing. We're just talking to Paul about what we should do with our rudder, leaking a little bit of water here. So I've dremeled a lot of this back and he said just along the bit where it is leaking, just drill a hole to let the water out and then fill it after that once it's all dry. So. Yeah, fill it with like a syringe so you manage to like stuff all the epoxy in. Yes, yeah, so that's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. I can't really think of where else it would come in though because all these are like very superficial. It doesn't seem like there's, oh, unless it came in from up here. After some research, we actually found it was really common for rudders to have water in them. It seems to be that water seeps in where the bolts are, but unless we wanted to take our rudder fully off and vacuum all the water out, which is a pretty huge job, drying it out as best as possible and putting some resin in the drain hole would do for now. All right, I should just keep dripping then. It's a bit in there, isn't it? <laughs> You'd hope it was, to be fair. Yeah, I think just gently does it so it doesn't... Oh, hello. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's so much water in there, no wonder it's... <laughs> wow, I'm glad we took it out. Yeah. Oh my god. Ugh. Yuck. Yeah. Wow. The actual bolt is stainless steel, so that, oh my god. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, Apart from that very end bit. I think it'll be right to put back in as long as we see flex over the end. Yeah. But now we've got to really dry that out. Yeah, it's fine. What have you found? I found a load of rudder bolts, which would be perfect for our rudder. And what did you spend ages doing? Finding these. These aren't quite as good because the threads don't line up, but these are the actual, like, bang on same ones. Yeah, I don't know why he had so many spares of them. What do they say on the label? Rudder shoe fittings. Check for corrosion when out of water. Yeah, that's because your anode wasn't working, mate. Nine and a half with... Oh, we've got the exact size and everything of them now. But look, those must be old ones. I don't know where they pulled those from. Oh, yeah. Because they're course. tiny. Zach was looking for the rudder bolts in a big bin in Marine Bazaar for a good... How long were you looking for those in there? A while. Yeah, he pulled up a little stool and <laughs> was was looking through all the thingies, and we found we found these ones, which we actually didn't end up using because we just decided to put the same one back in. But if we had known that, we could have put a new one in. It's like a perfect. I mean, these are all pretty perfect, but that one is like brand brand new. Oh well, we know for next year. Yeah, we've got three. Yeah, three perfect ones in here. I don't know where he got these from. That's funny, we've just found that. You blast it with water and then I think put the hairdryer on it just for like a few minutes. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Blast it. Yeah, it's good. So the guy who owns that boat 
just there. We were just chatting to him, he's gone now. He's selling the boat actually, it's going tomorrow. But he said, just fill the hole with a little bit of blue towel and then let it trail down. And what will happen is it will suck all the water out and it will drip down. So it's a really good way to do it. But what I think we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna, we're gonna pour a little bit of acetone into a pot, suck it up with a syringe and then pump some acetone in blow the acetone out and what we'll do is absorb water and clean it at the same time and then we'll just let it dry. Paul said if there's more than a pint of glass that comes out it's probably a lot more of the rudder. <laughs> so this is the engine intake for the water. Okay yeah that's not that's, and I'm just gonna oh gosh I'm gonna go in and just wiggle it to get any calcium and any sea life off basically. Do you want to use this one back up? Yeah, I need a thin one. Yeah? Yeah. I've just undone this, which is our water intake for the engine. So that comes out and then in here is a strainer. Which we have never emptied. Which we've never emptied. It's a bit... Oh, there. Ooh. There's a piece of crap in there. And down there, I can see like. Zach just pulled up the strainer. It smells like a stagnant beach. <laughs> yeah, there's not too much gunk or rubbish in it. I think Becca just found a muscle. Yeah, tiny, tiny muscle. That's hard to get out. Yeah, so Becca just found a little muscle or something in there. So, yeah, it's good we're getting all that kind of stuff out now because it's the best time to do it. And I'm just going to go and check this stuffing box and make sure that there's no corrosion on any of the bolts on it. We're in the engine room, and the thing that I'm going to be looking at is is that bolt there and that one there. There's a bit of like calcium build up on it at the moment. I'm just gonna go and take that back and if there's any significant corrosion behind it. So this is how this epoxy repair is looking. I'm really happy with that. Completely flush. This one, looking really good. It's just, I need to add a bit more to the center. This is all smooth too. I just need to add a bit more in there. Wait for that to dry and sand that back once more. Yeah. Oops. Happy days. So it's super windy, but this rudder repair, it's just still dripping and it seems like it's dripping the same amount as it was yesterday. I think I'm going to take it back further, dry it out properly and then just build it back up with epoxy. I think that's just the best thing to do. So you can see, there was barely any clearance there. And I'm just going in and getting all the crap out of there. So there's some clearance. Funnily enough, we had sat wonky through the weekend, so a quick reshuffle was in order to ensure we didn't feel like we were falling overboard the entire time. Just climbed up onto the boat and <laughs> we, we were thinking before, should we fill up our water tank so we're not listing? Nah. It'll be fine. And we've got a whole tank of fuel and the boat sat like this. So being up here, it's pretty, pretty jarring. Um, but it's great fun. Look at this. We've just been straightened. We have just been straightened. Now we can relax knowing we are flat. Lovely. Thanks for watching. Join us next week and find out what unexpected metal corrosion we found. Hint, in really important places. Oh, and Taylor gets a bit of a makeover, but you're going to have to wait till next Monday to see that.